consumer data analysis is really done for market research purposes. It's so that you can understand who are the target consumers, what is their behavior, uh, and what's going to be important to your business, whether you're a dispensary or a grower or a producer or a brand. We look at two major data sources. The first is our transactional data, so the point of sale information, which is helping us understand what's selling in the cannabis industry. And we track the legal sales specifically. And we do that by partnering with hundreds of dispensaries um, in dispensaries across the, each of the states that we track. We aggregate that data, project it up to represent the full market. And then what we give back to our retail partners and our brand clients is very, very detailed information telling you exactly what's selling within the cannabis space. So we can tell you what's selling by category, by brand, by individual product. We'll be really understand how big is the market, how fast is it growing, which categories are growing faster than others, and even more specifically, which brands and products are winning within the space. However, the cannabis industry is unique because each market is so different in terms of the regulatory framework, the way the stores are set up, uh, the products they're allowed to sell. So we actually have to build up each of those markets individually and look at them um, state by state and sometimes even region by region. We give you insight about what is selling in your dispensary down to the category product item level, individual brands and all the rest of it. But we also enable you to compare that data to the overall trends in your state as well. So that you can see that uh, concentrates are 28% of my sales, but they average 26% in the state. So I'm doing quite well with concentrates. But with edibles, you know, I only have 12% of my sales in edibles. And in fact, the state average is 15%. So then you can dive inside the edibles and try and find out what is it that I'm not carrying that's selling really well in the rest of the state that would boost my overall sales and increase my customer loyalty. Specifically, dispensaries can use the data to uh, better assess uh, the products that they, that they sell in their stores. Um, so understanding uh, what is selling across the entire market helps them be more educated in making sure they have the right product assortment. So the right um, value tiers of products from budget to mainstream to luxury and premium type products, um, but also across different categories, what's on the shelves. One of our products, we just considered it a, a lost leader. Um, we were making it to, it, you know, it sold, which was fine. It wasn't massive selling. And then when we got into Green Edge, we realized it's the second best selling product in that category. <laughs> and we were like, okay, we need to ramp this up. Yeah. Um, develop the product more, make more varieties of it, and it's just exploded since then. So for dispensaries, of course, it's becoming competitive. There's another store somewhere in your vicinity that is also carrying cannabis products. You want to make sure that what you're carrying in your dispensary are the most popular products, that most consumers who are coming into your dispensary are going to say, yes, that's what I was looking for. And they're going to leave satisfied and they're going to be loyal. They're going to come back again and again and they're going to become lifetime value customers worth thousands of dollars to you. What you don't want is for them to come into the store looking for a particular product because they heard about it or a friend told them or something or they saw a little bit of advertising and then they don't find it and they're disappointed and then they leave. In a nutshell, it's category management, right? It's making the most of the real estate on your shelves. So if there's, you know, one of the, one of the best examples is say, you know, you right now in the cannabis industry, at least in California, uh, everyone is just going with your standard 100% markup, right? Especially for your, uh, your package products. What if you could charge five extra dollars for that product? I mean, that's five, that's five dollars that you're leaving on the table for every item sale. One of the things that we use Green Edge for is, is de determining what the market will bear on pricing. So we come out with a, a new product, so what will the market bear? What's a price that will make it competitive and, and that it moves off the shelves, you know? We take that information and use it smartly about the future, and then we also grade ourselves on the past, you know, how did we do? Consumer research is essentially understanding um, everything there is to know about the cannabis consumer. And we like to look at it from a 360 degree perspective. So we do that by looking at two main data sources. The first is transactional point of sale data. And when you look at that data long enough, you start to ask yourself a couple of additional questions. One of which is, well, who is that cannabis consumer? and why are they making the purchases that they're making. And that's where our second data set comes in. And that's our quantitative consumer research data. And the quantitative consumer research data 
uh, looks at the consumers from a very holistic perspective to understand who they are from a demographic, from a psychographic, their attitudes, their behaviors, um, and essentially why they're consuming cannabis. In the consumer research that we do at BDS Analytics, we split the world into consumers and non-consumers. Um, and how we do that is identify who is a past six month consumer. Um, and then we identify those non-consumers and split them between acceptors and rejectors. And acceptors are people who are open to consuming, but don't currently. Rejectors are not, out, are not open to consuming, nor do they consume currently. Um, and so thinking about that total pie, and this is among adults 21 plus, so again, we're always talking about legal cannabis. Um, we can break out those three groups and really identify who those people are, not only demographically, but also attitudinally and behaviorally. And that's really essential to get beyond just basic demographics. So what we know about the current cannabis consumer is that they're both male and female. Um, their average age of about 42. And this is in the four core legal state markets. So California, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. Um, we know they are employed full time. They enjoy the outdoors. They're very social people. Um, they are willing to spend more for quality. They like to try new products. So all of a sudden when you get this in-depth data beyond just demographics, again, you start seeing who these people are. You can start visualizing them. And what that immediately does when we look at that profile of a consumer, um, especially when we're out presenting this data outside of core legal markets, all of a sudden it makes people think, wow, that's really who the cannabis consumer is? Um, because what people have in their mind is really what's portrayed in movies. Um, at least outside of our core legal markets, um, they identify a, a cannabis consumer you know, especially some of those in other states that think of it as the Wild West. They think of 21 year old wearing a tie dye, living in their parents' basement, um, you know, high all day laying on the couch, not living out a full life, not being social, not being a, a productive member of society. And everything we're seeing about who a cannabis consumer is really debunks that belief and that understanding that that, that stoner is who it is. And really, that stoner stereotype is truly the outlier as we think about cannabis consumers. An interesting uh, thought we observed here is that as the, it's an older consumer going into a dispensary these days, typically the bud tenders are young. So can the bud tenders actually relate to the older consumer when the consumer says, you know, I haven't slept for a week or I've got terrible backache and I've had it for 20 years and can you help me with that? Chances are that bud tender is probably not very well qualified to advise them. I think there is some, uh, some of the most sophisticated dispensaries and chains of dispensaries are thinking about the demographic of the bud tender that they put in front of the consumer, absolutely. And they should be looking at the profile of the consumer, not only who's coming in the door today, but that we want to come into the door next year or the year after. And then you think, well, then we need to train the right kind of demographic of bud tender or train these younger people to be really good at relating to the geezers like me. Well, it's really different about the cannabis industry, especially the retail environment, um, is that in, in most states, you cannot just walk in, shop around, look around, pick products up, smell them, open the box, look at them. Um, it, it, it's much more of a controlled environment. About 40% of current consumers in legal adult use and medical markets who shop at a dispensary um, cite some sort of almost negative emotion before they go into a dispensary. Um, again, that's 40%. Um, that doesn't mean all the time they feel that way, but intimidated, anxious, um, concerned. There's a lot of emotions there that people are feeling, and some of those people are also feeling excited, and that's a positive emotion. The hurdle currently with the current dispensary uh, model is for those consumers or those acceptors who aren't currently consuming but open to it, um, there is a little bit of intimidation, a little bit of fear of, of walking in that door and what's going to happen once I'm inside. And then when I'm inside, am I going to feel stupid? Am I not going to ask the right questions or understand enough? Um, and, and what's really essential is making those people feel comfortable, comfortable to ask questions and, and comfortable in the environment. Cannabis is different from many other types of retail, uh, and in some ways it's also very similar to other types of retail. I see a lot of similarities between retailers, specialty retailers in the ski industry, for example, and specialty retailers in the cannabis industry. For one thing, they have a very similar stereotype customer base. If you think of that young male, uh, what we like to call enthusiast consumer, uh, he looks very similar in the cannabis shop as he does in the ski shop. And interestingly enough,
your average bud tender is very similar to your average ski shop uh, employee in that they know how to speak that language. They know how to talk to that fellow core enthusiast who already knows about strain names and species names and types of products and delivery mechanisms. And both of those two different industries have a similar challenge in reaching beyond that core consumer, that core young male stereotype consumer, and finding the rest of your consumer base, what we like to call growing the pie. And the challenge is, is making sure that you are training your staff and also understanding from a marketing and branding perspective to make sure that you're taking the effort to understand and reach out to those other consumer groups who quite frankly are probably gonna end up being a larger percentage of your overall consumer market.